Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I'm making, please click that subscribe button. Also remember to click that bell button and make sure to tick that box to send all notifications so you don't miss out on any videos. With that in mind, let's get on with the video. What's up guys, welcome to Munchkins Gaming, where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Munchkins logging in to bring you another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. And in this video, we're going to be looking through the latest character event that we received, and it is on Gilgamesh. And of course, this is going to be concentrating on the EX fight. So without further ado, let's start this video. And so we're going to start off this video as always going to be on the weakness, resistances and abilities of the boss. And this time we're going to be fighting the Weapon Keeper, which has a weakness to Thunder Elements. However, it doesn't have any resistances, which is good for us. So this is just like any other behemoth. The first ability it has is Rake, which is a melee brave attack, Heave, a melee HP attack, Flare which is a magic brave attack, Meteor which is a group magic brave attack, it has access to Flare Star which is a powerful group magic brave attack, and what separates the Weapon Keeper from the other behemoths are the abilities of Clo Colossal Energy Draw which increases its brave and raises its defense and this also has a high turn rate. And the other one is the better version of it is the Titanic Energy Draw which grants itself a max brave up, a then grants itself brave, then further raises its defense, and then also has a high turn rate. Next up it has full power which increases its brave and then does a melee HP attack. It has access to Rising Arms which is a range brave attack and it also inflicts a max brave down and a speed down. And finally it has Banishing Arms which is a group range brave attack plus HP attack which inflicts max brave down, speed down, max HP down and attack down. However, the final nail in the coffin, which I think makes the Weapon Keeper a lot harder than your average behemoth, is that it is immune to all debuffs. But anyway, we'll go through that a little bit later. In the meantime, let's take a look at some general tips and guides now that we know the weaknesses and resistances and abilities of the Weapon Keeper. The first one is to save about 80% of your abilities on the final boss. Now this seems to be a recurring thing for my first tip because generally this first tip is targeted to new players who are trying to get their first EX clear. However, if you are a veteran, you probably know this by now anyway. The next tip I have for you guys is obviously to use the boosted characters or the synergy characters. In this particular event, we have Gilgamesh, Bart, and Hope. They all have extra 50% stats, so they are a lot stronger than your average character. Especially, obviously, if you weigh in, if you max limit, break them and stuff. But if you don't have any of these characters, then I do have a few character suggestions. And these are Squall, Tidus, Cloud, Lightning, Terra, Noctis, Vaughn, or Alice. Now, I did mention here that uh, some of these characters actually are gimped a little bit, especially Tidus, uh, Terra in some some sense as well, are kind of gimped, and Cloud as well, I would say, and Vaughn as well. And the reason for this is because their debuffs actually won't work on the boss. Now you can obviously still bring them and because they do quite a decent amount of damage then it sort of cancels that out but they are uh, fighting a little bit gimp than they usually are. And again that's not to say that they are completely useless, it's just part of their skill set are basically 
non-existent in this fight. So there you go. Now for the healer slash brave battery options, I do have of course Selfie is probably the best character that we have right now in global. Yuna is uh, my second choice. Ishtola is there as well. She's a grave great brave battery and i put in kryl there because kryl did receive her level 60 awakening and she does have thunder based attacks which is the boss is weak to plus she does have brave battery potential so i just put her there if you have max out kryl then she is an option as for the summon i do have ifrit bahamut and Ramu uh, for the summon. Obviously Ifrit, again, my favorite summon, the 20% attack is just so good. And we have Bahamut, uh, I think my would be my second choice uh, as the best summon in the game. And Ramu, obviously, to take advantage of the Thunder Element weakness. All right, now let's take a look at some general tips for the fight itself. Now the first one I have here is to actually bring AoE HP damagers like Squall in the party for the early stages. And the reason for this is to save on turns in the early stages so you can use up more turns in the final boss because believe me, you are going to be using quite a lot of turns in the last boss. And from memory, I do believe you, you have to be around about in the 40 to 50 turns and probably not get broken too much. Plus, you, ha you didn't take a lot of HP damage in order to get the max score that you need, which is, I do believe, is 120,000 points. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just going by memory. So, it is quite a lot of points and that's the safe around safe turns that you should be able to get the score which is about again 40 to 50 turns now my next tip is to actually use your summon before the boss bust itself the reason for this is because you will do a lot more damage or your damage output will be a lot higher uh, before the boss buffs itself because once it uses colossal energy draw or the titanic energy draw it will have a high defense although you may if you are having struggles when it comes to breaking the boss whenever they're in this state then you will probably want to use your summon during that uh, particular circumstance but I would say if you are unable to break the boss while it is charging then you probably don't have enough DPS and I would suggest probably bringing a higher DPS character or just someone that can shave away most of those um, brave because honestly if you are aiming for the high points you should be doing as much HP damage as you can while the boss is not charging and for the final tip for you guys for this particular fight is actually corresponding to the second uh tip basically when i was saying if you actually don't break the boss when it's charging then you are lacking in the dps department so having two excellent dps plus one brave battery is the best combination that i found in order to get the points DPS to break and obviously the brave battery to bypass the uh, high defense of the boss so you can do your HP damage once you have broken the boss. And now let's take a look at some possible party compositions. As always, the first one is just straight up going to be the uh, boosted characters which is Gilgamesh, Bart and Hope. And I did put Squall as the support here as because um, as for my first tip when in this particular fight is just to AOE HP damage down the early stages so you can, and you know, use up 
all your abilities on the boss later on. And basically, if you have Squall Support, you will probably have beaten the, all four of the early stages and your Squall Support, if it's good enough, shouldn't be uh, shouldn't have run out anyway, or it would run out on the fourth wave just in time for the last boss. Now my next composition here is Squall, Selfie, and Noctus, and as you guys can see, that's the team that I'm actually using. And honestly, Selfie is can be replaced with Yuna here. I actually used Yuna as my first try, however I wasn't as uh, aggressive as I, I should have been and so I sort of like wasted too much time on the early stages and then didn't get the uh, points that I needed. So uh, after that I just sort of like been playing around with my party composition uh, and decided maybe I'll take selfie instead. Uh, to give her a try because I actually haven't maxed out my selfie as you guys can see or would have seen uh, It's actually has a level 59 uh, Crystal passive, so I never got her 60 yet But I will get her with after doing some more cops. I'm sure I will be able to get that uh, level 60 crystal passive Anyway, moving on, I do have Lightning Selfie and Noctis in this one with, again, a, a Squall support. Uh, and the only reason why I actually bring Squall in every single one is if you don't have Squall, at least you can have a Squall support and just blitz through the first four waves, basically, if you have a Squall support, especially if they have their EX weapon as well. That is a definitely handy. Lightning is obviously there just to uh, take advantage of the Thunder weakness of the boss. Noctis, I, the reason why I've been putting Noctis here uh, is because of his ability to launch the enemies. And also because Lael is kind of gimped in this particular fight. So Noctis is kind of like the next best choice here. Now as for my final team composition, I do have Squall, Selfie, and Terra. Again, Terra is kind of like gimped in this fight because she is unable to apply those debuffs. And you can put Titus here as well. You can swap out Terra with Titus or uh, Squall with Titus. But again, he cannot apply the debuffs on the last boss, which is why I don't really particularly like putting them in this particular fight. So in the end, what do I think of this fight? Well, I feel like this is probably one of the more challenging fight that we had recently. Honestly, the EX fights and the lost chapters that we have re received so far are a little bit easier than this one. And probably the only one that I can contend with, like some people are saying, was the snow lost chapter fight was actually hard um, but I didn't find that too difficult um, this one it did take me a couple of turns uh, or a couple of tries before I got the max score that I wanted just a little bit tweak here and there but overall it is much more challenging than the late you know the last couple of EX that we have gotten Anyway guys, I think that's it for this video. Remember to click like, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful at all. As always, I'd like to hear from you guys. Which team did you use to beat this fight? And make sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter at Munchkins Gaming. This is Munchkins logging off, and I'll see you guys in the next level.